sometimes you can get a job that comes in and you're working on it ASAP. And other times things unfold as people's lives unfold for various reasons. This particular plan we worked with in design and the floor plan and whatnot, that was, sheesh, three years ago, four years ago. I mean, it was a while ago, maybe even five. The, the couple came in and the, the youngest child was just a little baby. And I think, I think they're pretty old now. So, uh, but it just, so you just, I guess the message here is when you embark on a building project, if you have to force it, go ahead. But if you can somehow, some way, take it how it comes and not use force, you'll have a better project and a better experience just all around. Have more fun. But normally I'm, you know, as a business owner, kind of at the top of the food chain doing bigger things. And it's so awesome to be able to get out here, work with my hands again, do the dance to, to create just kind of that focus and okay double checking things making things work all that communication and and bringing rubber to the road i mean we've talked about we've designed it we've built it it's been engineered everything's sent out but there's not gonna be perfection and so then figuring out how to make things work finally is awesome and it's even better when we get to work with builders who who know that is construction have patience as well as creativity in helping find solutions and uh, so it's good to leave the writing the podcasting the employee meetings the emails all that just poof, all gone forget about it for a few days focus on this kind of zen like zen like uh, relaxation like we say in the book builders have to pull the rabbit out of the hat they have to exercise patience and creativity and we're an assistant to the builder right and in this case there was some miscommunication between the entry and the great room as far as alignment and it's kind of like Ugh! when we found it but this builder is great you know he uh kind of gave some suggestions i brought the model home i had my computer with me brought the model to the hotel and worked on it that night and i was having trouble getting it going and he sent me a text that ding gave me that little burst of creativity I needed and things rolled and we got a solution that really is dynamite and in many ways better. So when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And so here's just a typical, many different ways to skin this cat, but there's a double beam here. They're just, we've just cyst right across, trim one stud down, frame that beam pocket in. This one could have been communicated during framing, but there's so much other communication taking place that it's kind of small potatoes and you just address it right on site after we've shifted and matched the concrete outside and done all our little uh, twinkle toes dancing to make things work and pretty basic. And then screws, that beam up top, we'll get some screws down into the top plate or up through the plate into the, th into the beam. And it could even, connect to the roof diaphragm as well. A lot of different connecting methods, but all common sense, just creativity and making things work. So right back here is the back patio. This is gonna be pretty tall. And here you can see these big concrete plinths, or columns. They go down to the basement, they're massive. Not the cheapest way to build things, but the Cadillac way to do it. If you're looking for longevity, See the posts, the post connectors here? Raise the camera. You can see up there, there's, they're, they're held off of the concrete so the stone caps will go on them. The, the, there's a little pin that shoots into the, into that connector. And anyway, that's gonna keep the bottoms out of the water. The other way to do this is to, you'd bring the post all the way down to the deck, have wood posts below, frame a box and use cultured stone on the outside. The disadvantage to that is you have to get ventilation to the inside. Some little ventilator holes, places where air can kind of just move and moisture can get out. Because if you don't do that, the likelihood of getting moisture there that just kind of fests and ferments in there and rots wood is probably high. And just take a peek in the garage. You can see the owner started staining. Some people like to stain the, the wood themselves. 
It's a big undertaking. As you can see by the trusses and even these little corbels, they don't take a man and a beast to move, but take some considerable effort and thinking about good posture and lifting protocol. But that's that's kind of you know, staging some of that, getting started on the staining. And you see the regular construction, trusses, two by fours. But this is assembled. We've got a bunch ready to go in back. And those trusses that we were looking at, we're gonna go bang, right here. See that big view, straight out. And there's, of course, the big trusses in back. And just a beautiful view here. The only problem with view, just a general rule of thumb, if you can see anywhere in any, any geographic location, if you can see, you've usually got wind. And we can see here. So, and then if the wind comes right over the valley in this morning, the sun is hot here. You almost got to take off your shirt. You go out back and rrr, put your shirt back on. So good insulation, good windows are definitely going to be something to want to think about here. So again, you see there's beam pockets starting to get framed here and, and just a regular construction. And the owners have chosen with our help, prodding and probing and giving them ideas of where timbers might fit the best. That's where the two trusses are going to sit. The third bent is going to sit right here. Bang. Here in the lumber yard, this is actually kind of boneyard, if you'd call it that. This ain't, mu ain't much left here. This was really piled high with just a whole jumble of wood. And if you happen to get a kit from us, you know, it's going to come out and there's going to be it's going to be very confusing at first and a little bit overwhelming. And you just have to take it piece at a time. You know, pick from here and there's pieces labeled. Eventually it all comes clear, but it takes time to program the computer and look around and then little by little it all becomes clear and you pick away at it and pretty soon it's all installed and up and you're moving on. Oh, that's not Poncho. No, TNS. TNS. Sometimes they don't drill straight. So you just kind of settle this in and let it sit there. 
and you use this right here. I'm there now, you just look at it for eyeballs. See this? Put your eye there. probably put these all up individually to where it lightens this all up. You know what, it's really such an amazing experience to uh, have the, the chance to work with Bert and uh, with the timber company. It's like, I think it's like, make the house beautiful and the build completely like different, you know. It's a way different way to, to build houses. Really, really beautiful.